Hi, this is Lynn Hunter, L-L-Y-N-H-U-N-T-E-R, and today we're going to do uh, the inking of the uh, lionfish that we had started in the last video. Now, um, the tools that I'm going to be using, this is a, uh, as it turned the other way, this is a Zebra Fine Point F301 pen. You can get these at um, most, um, like, a Staples and um, Office Max. It's a pretty common pen. Um, I think you can get them at Target, too. Um, if not, you can also get them online. Ze Zebra's a really good pen. They're Japanese. Uh, I like them a lot. This is your standard um, big stick. I might be trading between this one and the good old uh, crystal. There is no difference between the crystal and the uh, the um, the white bodied. It's just a matter of um, the plastic that they use. The ink inside is exactly the same. One of the reasons why I'm using Ballpoint rather than India, um, it's relatively permanent. It's probably not as permanent as India ink is. It has the ability to um, have different value and a different kind of flow to it. Um, I will do um, regular India ink demonstrations um, at another time. But I, I like to do with watercolor. Um, I, I, the reason why I like ballpoint pen is because it dances, is the way I like to put it. Um, there's a number of ways that you can uh, delineate um, the way different tools work. But um, as a medium, I, I really like ballpoint. Um, discovered it in college. I think a lot of kids, uh, people discover ballpoint pen a lot earlier, but... I was one of the good kids who, who didn't utilize a pen in my books when I was in high school. So um, I discovered it rather late. Okay, so what we've got here right now, we've got our the head of our lionfish. I'm going to start with the head. Um, we'll see how long um, it actually takes us to get through some of this because I'm going to be detailing it. So I might stop the video and go to other portions of the drawing as we go along so that... You're not having to watch every little detail of actually doing the underdrawing. Um, so right now we have the pencil down, and it's a little heavy. And it's sometimes easier to work on something when you do what I call ghosting back. I'm taking some of the drawing here. This is a kneaded eraser. I talk about this a lot. You can get these, and the, they're in little squares that you can either buy from an art supply store, um, you can get them in a package. They don't sell them separately for some reason. At Staples, you have to get out like this little brown eraser with them as well. Um, I like kneaded erasers because you can regulate the size and how gentle you're pulling away the, um, the pencil from the paper. And what it does is what, what I'm doing here, and you can see it, is that there's a ghost of a drawing still left there. I mean, even if you erase really, really hard with a plastic eraser, there'll be what I call a ghost of the drawing left there. Um, and I find that um, by using a kneaded eraser, though, you get the full effect. Now, we're going to start with... I don't um, tend to do... Um, real solid lines a lot. I have a tendency to do what I call a sketchy line. I'll, I'll link like one stroke into another. And right now I'm trying to be really, really careful because I start with the eyes. I, I always start with with the eyes on um, a character. And I'm going to put the highlight up there because he's looking down. I have him look down as I realized I started to have him look up. And I really want him to look down because he's attacking something. And I was originally, I wanted to give him more of a, um, I think the, the next time around, I will probably do another lionfish. Um, this guy got to be a little bit on the overly realistic side. Okay, I don't like, this is a good example of, okay, I over-inked the side and I was going to do the eye up towards the top there. So that's a mistake. I don't like the way that went. So as soon as we get a little bit further on in the rendering of the face, I'm going to come back in and show you how to fix that. Because no matter what anybody says, um, ink is only permanent to some degree, especially if you use it on good paper. This is a, um, 
140 pound or uh, 300 gram, I believe, um, watercolor paper. And because of that, um, you can scrape on it. You can scrape away the top layer of the paper and it will still hold well. Um, so when you make mistakes like that one, I'm going to come back in with a, uh, I have a knife here and we'll come back with with a knife right now. I'm doing his, his whiskers. And when a, a lion roars, it has these lines on its face because it's scrunching its face up in order to pull back its cheeks in order to roar. So I'm doing that with this particular lion. That's a lion fish. And then the mouth is open wide. It has two big, big canines. That's what goes underneath those little pouches. If you have a cat, cat has a, uh, your standard domestic cat. <laughs> if you blew it up, its head up to the size of a lion, it'd have a similar type of teeth structure. That's why they, they have those, those, those two little, when you draw cats, I'm going to do a cartoon cat demonstration, um, here soon too. And, um, they have these, you know, you use circles for these the pouches where those, those big canines go. And then the tongue when it's roaring. And when this gets painted in, um, lions have black mouths. Their entire mouth is black. Whereas that pink tongue shows up really strong in that black mouth. There we go. That's pretty much do it there. I'm doing a little bit of dancing, figuring out where I want the mane and how I want this to look more like um, fins. Okay, now I'm kind of come in. Um, it's like dry enough. This is a, um, a standard uh, box cutter type blade. You could use an X-Acto knife blade or razor blade. And I'm going to come in and I'm just going to scrape away the paper very carefully. On the top layer and you, you think about like sandpaper you're um, basically keeping it perpendicular to the surface and you're just scraping that away and you get a little fuzz and then once you scrape that away you take your kneaded eraser and you go over it and that will take all the most of the hairs away and then you just give it a little bit of scrape again. And if you have any mistake at all that you've made, like I said, um, this is hot press watercolor paper. Um, so it's really, really thick and it's very strong. And the fibers are cotton and they can tolerate that kind of um, reworking and damage. So, and I don't like what I did here. I kind of danced into that area a little bit. Not the way I wanted to. So, I'll lightly scrape that away too. Yeah, that's better. And then, again, in with the kneaded eraser. And, there. And I should probably have waited for, for um, the entire thing to dry a little bit longer because, again... Um, with ballpoint pen, it does take a little bit of curing time. It's like before I work on this with paint, um, I will let it cure for um, oh, an hour or so. You don't need, you usually you don't need to cure, have it cure for more than that. But um, the glops will um, of the pen will smear. There is some smearing that will go on um, unless you fully let it dry. So I would highly advise letting your drawing dry a little bit. You know, like I said, at least, at least uh, 45 minutes to an hour before you uh, actually do any painting on it or um, go into the final. Okay, 
I'm the, the the pen that I'm using right now. This is a little bit fine point for what I want, so I'm gonna come in with my uh, the big. Yeah, yeah, and of course, okay. I have a paper towel handy um, for the blops that you get on bullet point. If you find you know every once in a while you want to just scrape your your ballpoint pen either across um, a um, a paper towel or um, run it by on just an excess piece of paper and then that way it's not in your way also I'm really bad about this I'm actually kind of a, um, have a problem with uh, not um, um, putting down a piece of paper on my, under my hand I'm a, I'm rather I'm rather a sloppy artist in some respects which also it, it comes out as um, looking, um, ha my work has more life to it, I feel. It's part of my style. I'm a bit of a slovenly individual, so that it also comes out of my style being a as, um, a bit more lifelike in the drawing, or you have, um, some more liveliness in the drawing. Now, lines have kind of round ears, so I'm going to give the edge of his ear is a little bit of roundness here and um, again off screen I've got uh, my uh, my um, iPad open to reference material and I'll have it on um, my browser with a, a, a tab for lions roaring and I've got a tab open for lion fish so that I can um, go back and forth between the two pages and use um, information on those pages for myself. Now you can see I'm, I'm doing a pattern here of I'm doing a shape of a fin and I'm taking it in a fan. I, I've initially set up like a fan like shape of how it's going to follow around there because um, the fins in a lionfish tend to be kind of wing-like in that respect. And then um, they have um, stripes. The lionfish has, has these, uh, they have a tendency to, to have stripes that go down those fins. So I'm following the lines across the fins. And I have four on this side and four on that side. Now, it's like nobody's going to count them, <laughs> per se. You know, it, when you do a painting, nobody's going to count and say, oh, well, that person that person drew five fins on this side and four on the other side. It's just a matter of two. Um, they visually balance better if you, you know, if you got um, what's known as bilateral symmetry. Um, bilateral symmetry meaning two um, cut in half. So it's the same on either side. And they have these kind of like barbel type um, fins, the lionfish like above its eyes and what have you. So I'm kind of giving the, uh, the mane more of a barbel look to it. And then we're gonna work on, let's see here. Take its arm. And I'll put some more barbels on the edge of the uh, its arm here. And this is going to be paw, claw. Give it a paw pad. And let's uh, web its toes since we've got an actual. It's going to be technically a fish. And web its toes. That's it is the end of the toes. Lines have retractable claws. And they have four toes and a dew claw on the front. So that basically their, uh, their front paws are more or less like our hands, or they're analogous to our hands. And then they have paw pads on each of their toes. And let's see here. 
Now this is the problem when you're drawing um, with reference. Um, a lot of times it's like, okay, I want to see, can I see the bottom of the lion's foot? No, no, I don't have any real good. I'm doing this more or less from memory that they, they have like this, this pad on the bottom of their foot. And like I said, I'm, this is fantasy. So we do get to take some light, some visual license here. Now you can tell the way I'm drawing, um, everything is a little bit sketchy still. What I will be doing here is once I paint this, well, when I get done with this, we'll let, uh, I'll let it dry for a bit. Um, because I like, like I said, the, um, the, uh, ballpoint pen will smear. If you, if you erase the pencil line underneath it right away, after you've finished your drawing, um, you, you might get a smear across the page. And if that case, again, what I just showed you with the, uh, the, um, the razor blade you can do I'm gonna expand this now we're, we're getting a place where we're growing a little bit more on the uh, let's see here uh, there we go so I'm gonna refocus a little bit because we're gonna go to the back and let's start doing the fins across the back and then what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to stop the camera in a few minutes and I'm going to start um, going over the, the entire thing, basically a little piece by a little piece. And it's going to take me probably, I'm suspecting about an hour and a half, two hours um, to get this piece to where I'm ready for it to be completely inked for painting. And that kind of detailing will take me quite a bit of time. Um, and I don't think you want to stay for the entire time for watching all of that. So I'm going to switch off the camera for a bit and go into a little bit more detailing and we'll come back and I'll show you towards the end um, what it looks like. And then I'm gonna turn off the camera again and let it dry and show you what I do right before I actually paint. And if you care to come back for the painting of it, um, what I do when the painting is completely done is I will go over the entire drawing one more time. And that's because when you're painting a watercolor, and I, it doesn't matter if it's um, 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 uh, liquid acrylic, which is much more transparent, or whether it's pigmented watercolor, um, it will leave some residue behind. And you do want to... Um, go over your entire painting, at least I feel that I do, um, just to give it a crisp, crispness. You could leave it alone and not go over it again, um, but I find that, that when you do do that, you get your lines become crisper, you um, uh, pull out spaces that you didn't paint, um, and it, it looks much better. Anyways, we're going to stop it here, and when we come back, um, we'll be close to being done and I'll show you a few extra things about detailing. Hi, we're back. Um, what I want, you can see I've, I've continued on with a lot of the detailing on the lionfish and I added a little uh, shrimp-like critter that he's about to attack just for a slight piece of humor. Um, I can't get too serious sometimes and I, I, I like to throw a little bit of humor in my piece, but you'll notice what I'm going to do now, I want to, um, what I said, take back the drawing that's underneath. I want to erase out um, all the pencil lines underneath because at this point it's really tough to uh, finish off the inking while there's that much graphite on the paper itself. Um, I find graphite is slippery and 
it will uh, interfere with some of your ink lines sometimes. That's why it, it's good to get it ghosted back a little bit more. And I wanted to show you what I was doing at this point before I go in and really start heaving up some of the detail. Um, I've already been working on it, oh, for probably um, 30 minutes since I turned off the camera to get to this point. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start heaving up the lines. And this one, it's like I wanted to make a uh, coloring book page out of it too before I paint it. So I am going to be going in doing um, actually quite a bit more detail on it before I do the painting. Normally I'll keep the drawing sometimes um, almost this loose, maybe a little bit tighter than this um, before I go in to do the painting. Um, if you look at some of the other videos I've done, especially with the uh, dinosaur or any of the alphabet letters, um, I keep I like to do those for you because when you watch me do one, I can do the complete inking and the complete painting in one fell swoop. And you can see exactly where I go from the beginning to the end finish of the detail. Um, with something like this where you've got a lot of detail and even though it's, it's relatively small, this is an 8 by 10 piece. Um, it does take a bit of time to get the complete image done. So basically what I'm going to be doing now is I will, I'm going to go in, like I said, I'm going to do all the details. I'm going to throw in the stripes and like the stripes I've got on his arm here. And you can see the speed that I'm, I'm kind of doing these that I'm doing it rather loosely. And then I'll go in and I'll tighten things up like this, you'll, you'll see that I'm not doing a real solid line. I have a tendency to almost um, make a line width and color it in. Um, and I'll go over the same line several times. And what that does, is it gives a thick and thinness while still giving an, an actual outline to the thing. So you have this feeling of... Um, skittery life in the drawing while um, with the thick and thin like in, in these areas where I've heavied it up the line it'll give it a feeling of solidity and um, almost a cut line and that's just that's the style that I'm using for this particular medium when I'm um, doing India ink I come up with a very similar style in the respect that I will give it a heavy outline um, because um, when you're doing linear things it gives that edge that you need um, to delineate things. Not everybody gives everything a hard edge. That's just my particular style and that's not saying because it's my style that you cannot do the same thing. There are a lot of artists who do that similar similar fashion. So. Um, it's not just one person's style, it's many people's style. Um, I've always said um, your style is basically your personality um, along with all the artists you've ever studied and loved. And it all comes together um, in your own work. And that's why no two artists have the same style because we all have different personalities. That's why I've always found the term, you know, um, I need to develop a style, a, a very odd idea, because um, your style comes with your labor and your study. You'll pick up the artists that you really love, and you'll incorporate their techniques into your techniques, and your the thing that's you will always shine out more above the things that you've learned from other artists. So I never worry about, you know, okay, I like this artist or I like that artist. Or somebody said to me, you know, they see some of my stuff and say, oh, your stuff really looks like Dr. Seuss. And it's like, well, thank you very much. I'm a very big fan of Theodore Geisel. I really appreciate his work. Or your stuff looks like it has Maurice Sendak in it. And it's like, well, thank you. Because that's part of my... My style is a legacy of all the artists that I've ever loved, and so will yours. 
So don't, if you haven't quote unquote developed a style yet, that's just because you're still learning and you still um, are getting better. And as you get better, your style is basically just going to be an amalgamation of all the things you've learned plus yourself. But anyways, um, I'm going to turn off the camera now and we're going to, when I come back, um, this thing will be close to finished and we'll be just about ready to um, get going on it for a painting. I'll be right back. Okay, so here we have the lionfish all done and ready for, basically I'm, what I'm going to do at this point is I'm um, going to scan it into my computer and you'll find, you know, it's like, even now it's got some rough edges here and there. Oops. And I'm going to um, heavy up some lines, more lines here and there um, for coloring page. Basically, um, I like to save if I'm doing, a, you know, a nice detailed page like this, um, I like to save it as a coloring page to give to my patrons. Um, I'm also hoping um, I will eventually make like, you know, Lynn's book of odd um, illustrations that are made for coloring. And this will be part of that. Um, but again, um, I, I, like I said, I put, put this, um, the coloring pages up for my patrons and you can download them, um, as JPEGs. Um, but this, at this stage, um, we're basically done. And again, the next video that I do on this will be, uh, painting it in watercolor. And once I paint it again, I will go over the ink work one more time so that some of these lines that are still, you know, a little bit loose, a little bit skittly. Um, it's like I may keep everything in the background where these are um, basically kelp that I've put in here and I put in bubbles that I'll paint around and the little shrimp that's been uh, scared to death, he's going to be probably pink and the lionfish will um, I'll probably gradiate the tone back into the background to keep everything in blues and what have you, and maybe put um, pinks and lighter colors up in this area. We'll see. Um, but come back and watch me paint it. And that's it for now. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for watching the video thus far. And I really appreciate you being here. My name is Lynn Hunter. Like the video, subscribe. Come join my patron. It's very inexpensive. It's $12 a year. Um, that's it. Um, I give out a lot of little premiums here and there. It also has my comic book, St Silk and Steel. And uh, you get to know what's going on in my life while I'm working in animation or what have you. Thank you very much for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Bye-bye.